Construction continues in the Mideast as war moves into its third day in Israel. Joining me now to weigh in on the events taking place and to tell us what happened during the Hamas attack is Robbie Berman. Robbie, an eyewitness to this all, he joins us now. Uh, ten hours in the future for us, correct? You're ten hours ahead of us. That is, that is correct. That is or, correct. It's or, about 3.30 p.m. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Robbie, thanks for making time for us. Uh, please, ex where were you? First of all, let's just set the table a little bit. Tell us what you do for a living. So I'm a tour guide in Israel. Well, I was a tour guide up until two days ago because everyone's called me and asked for their money, back their deposits. I gave them back all their money. I completely understand. Uh, there won't be tourism here for a while. Uh, two days ago, I was uh, with my girlfriend. We woke up at 6.30 in the morning to an alarm. We ran into the bomb shelter, closed the window, closed the door, and heard an explosion came out and saw that a building in Tel Aviv was, uh, was bombed by a missile. Uh, Israel has been under attack by land, air, and sea. Over 800 people have been killed in one day. 800 people, many of them, 260 teenagers, civilians who were at a music fair. That Hamas crossed the borders at 15 points. They managed to cross the border, uh, massacre soldiers, massacre civilians, bring 200 civilians and soldiers, kidnap them, bring them back into Gaza. Now they're abusing them, killing them, raping them. Uh, this is like, uh, this is just insane. These are not the rules of law, the laws of humanity, law, uh, rules of war. Um, this is just insane what's going on, just insane. Well, um, a friend of mine, her, she was also a tour guide. Her, her son was killed and we're waiting for the body to be returned by the army. He was a brave soldier defending us on the southern border. He was killed two days ago in this when this happened. Israel is a small country. So when 5,000 rockets are fired into it, uh, I'm curious, are there safe spots? Are, are there green zones where people are, their lives are, are normal? Or is everybody in Israel right now dealing with this? Well, every ever since the 1991 Gulf War, there everyone every building that has has to have a new building has to have some kind of um, room that's a safe room that is surrounded by metal. Um, but just to give you some proportion on 9/11. I was in New York for 9/11. 3,000 Americans were killed yesterday. Israel's a small country of only 10 million people. About 800 were killed. That's about 25,000 Americans. Imagine if 25,000 right. Americans were killed in a surprise attack being kidnapped, being tortured. Uh, and with, when, when I say kidnapped, I mean, they're octogenarians, they kidnap people, old people, old men and women with dementia, children, babies, six month old babies, three year old babies. It's, it's just insane. These people are not playing, playing with a full deck. They, this is not Islam, by the way. This is an extreme, radical, fanatical religious group that's not playing by normal, regular Islam. These are people that have taken to the next level. And by the way, the Wall Street Journal reported that they believe that the Iran, because it doesn't seem that Hamas would have the technology, the sophistication uh, to do such kind of a, a complex attack on Israel and be so successful. And the Wall Street Journal recently reported today that they believe that Iran helped, uh, helped in the attack and the truth is, whether they did or they didn't, Iran is the elephant in the room. What are we going to do? They are a religious fanatic group similar to Hamas. They're killing their people on the street for not covering their hair. We're going to wait for them to get an atomic, a nuclear bomb. We have been putting embargoes on them for 30 years. This is a wake-up call for Israel. This is a wake-up call for America, England, France. We need to do something about Iran because Hamas just attacked us with guns and, ro and small rockets. And look how much damage they were able to inflict upon us. What are we going to do when Iran gets a nuclear weapon? Enough is enough. Someone has to take responsibility and say, yes, we're going to war because we are good and they are bad and we can't let them get nuclear weapons. There is a feeling on social media, Robbie, as I, I read, that that enough is enough. That You, you know how it works. There'll, there'll, in, within uh, two news cycles, there will be reports on cable news saying Israel's response is disproportionate to the attacks. And you know how it works. <laughs> right. you, know, you know, but, but, there's, right. but there's a feeling now, and um, uh, maybe that you f see it on the street, there's a feeling now that, oh, you know what, there is no response that, di that is disproportionate. That this, is, this is the time, this is gonna be the time where the well, I, I don't think I, I don't think people understand what the word dispor disproportionate means. Disproportionate proportionate doesn't mean I kill ten, you kill ten. That's not what the word proportionate means. The word proportionate means I use as much power as I can to overcome and win, and not, not any more. So if you come at me with a knife, a proportionate response. If I happen to have a knife and a gun, you're not going to tell me I need to use a knife. I'm allowed to use a gun, right. even though it's disproportionate, because that's when I need to beat you. So we need to beat, and unfortunately, and I feel very bad 
for innocent Palestinians in the in Gaza that are going to be killed. But we need to wipe out Hamas. Enough is enough. I was wrong. I'm a left winger. I was wrong all these years. My right wing friend said, we can't pull out of Gaza unilaterally. They'll have a little terrorist state. And I said, no, you'll see. It'll be a great gesture. We have to admit people on the left and people on the right have to admit when they're wrong. I was wrong. Everything they said was true. It turned into a little terrorist state. They kidnapped soldiers, kidnapped civilians. They launched missiles. We need to take them out. It's over. And then we need to go take care of the elephant in the room, which is called Iran. And I, I wanted to expand on that because there is a progressive element in Israel that that felt like you did. You're saying you don't feel that way anymore. Is that are there more of you, Robbie, where people are going to say, hey, you know what? Our strategy was wrong. We have to we have to we have to fight this with eradication. Is there are more people thinking like you are right now? I think a lot of people have been converted. I don't we wouldn't use the word eradicate. That's a little bit too extreme. I don't want to eradicate two million Palestinians, a lot of innocent Palestinians living in Gaza. We need to eradicate Hamas. It's going to be a long, hard war. Israeli soldiers are going to be killed. Uh, Israel, uh, Arab uh, civilians will be killed. It's going to be really sad, really long. But that doesn't also take away from the fact that we have a significant and serious problem with the West Bank. Palestinians deserve human rights. Uh, they, 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 deserve, they deserve that, and we have a problem there, and we need to work on it together. Both Israel and the Palestinians need to do more to, to come together to solve that problem. But again, going back to the problem, you try to eradicate Hamas when they're using other innocent civilians as a human shield. How do you—you you, you can't do it surgically. Uh, that's been proven over time. So uh, yes, you're going to have to—there's going to be a public relations war that you're going to— yes. That's going to hit you in the teeth there again. Will be, there, will, there will be collateral damage. There will be collateral damage. But look at today. They just announced, Hamas announced today, that one of the bombs that is the Israeli Air Force bombed on Gaza killed four Hamas uh, terrorists, or they called militants, as well as four Israeli civilians that were kidnapped. And we understand that when we bomb Gaza, we might be killing innocent Israelis and innocent Palestinians, but we're doing that because we cannot allow Hamas to grow and fester and continue to be. They killed seven, eight hundred of our innocent people in one day. This is just outrageous, outrageous. And, we, and that's not to count all the people that were taken prisoner or captive or whatever, the, whatever you want, whatever word you yeah, want. And the videos, the videos oh, that are coming out of there. Are it's just impossible awful. to watch. One 19 year old yeah. girl, one 19 year old young, one young woman had blood all oh, around her pants and areas that showed she was abused. Another a boy, a seven-year-old boy, is being slapped around by Palestinian kids in Gaza. I mean, it's just, it's just awful. It's just awful. All right, uh, Robbie, it, it was an honor to speak with you. Stay as safe as you can, and uh, I, I imagine our your phone will be ringing from KUSI again as we, as this nightmare continues. Thank you for covering it. You bet. Uh, see you down the road.